um, through bypassing this, this flue gas desulfurization equipment. That's a violation of the right to health, education, dignity and a serious threat to young people's lives. Now these are the views of civil society groups after yet another child died an undignified death in a pit latrine. Four-year-old Langalam Viki was buried in the Eastern Cape yesterday. Her death is a stark reminder of the backlog of proper sanitation and conditions at schools. In 2013, the Basic Education Department published a blueprint for how it wants schools to look. But as ENCA's Ronald Masinda reports, 10 years later, the department says it's still facing challenges. A ongoing health hazard when many children are exposed to inhumane conditions. This is what, in 2023, many pupils from the Eastern Cape are subjected to. The South African Human Rights Commission in the province says there doesn't seem to be an end in sight to this problem. I think what is important for us is to keep on providing education, education, education in respect of human rights. The toilet is a dignity issue and it's been a dignity issue uh, for as long as we have had them in the uh, schooling system. It is a legacy issue. And 10 years ago, we lost the life of Michael Kumapi in Chubeng village in Limpopo. But 10 years from there, now we are sitting with a similar situation. In 2013, Basic Education Minister Angie Mushecha published the minimum norms and standards. This law was to ensure that every school in the country had access to water, electricity, internet, safe classrooms and working toilets. But nearly 10 years later, the department says it has faced a myriad of challenges in meeting its obligations. The toilets are part of our reality. You recall that we've experienced um, challenges in the process of delivering the much needed uh, sanitation facilities in schools, but it's not all been smooth sailing. You'll recall that particularly in the Eastern Cape, there were floods and the floods disrupted the work that we were doing there. But before that, there was COVID and the lockdown. Klanga says other departments in the local and provincial governments should do their bit to help alleviate the pressure by providing the necessary infrastructure to eradicate pit toilets. It's the reality of our country. Uh, most of it is rural. Most of it doesn't have water. You don't find a situation where every household has a tap uh, or where there's a pipe reaching every village. We don't have that. And for as long as that is not available, we'll have to continue to find other ways we have Enviroloo and other types of toilets that are there to provide uh, dignified sanitation facilities. The local branch of Amnesty International vows to continue demanding accountability from education authorities. When we look at the access to safe and adequate sanitation, the department has missed multiple deadlines to eradicate unsafe pit toilets from all schools. Um, according to our calculations, 13% of public schools, which amounts to 2,983 schools, still use pit toilets. But I think what's really important is to bring it back to the negative impact this is having on the enjoyment of the right to education, as well as other rights, including privacy and dignity, and also the link between poor school infrastructure and conditions and their negative impact on learning outcomes, which includes irregular attendance and drop, higher dropout rates. The Basic Education Department says Finance Minister Enoch Odongwana's Gazette suggested that some provinces, including the Eastern Cape, had not spent allocated funds meant to improve school infrastructure. Instead, that money was redirected to other provinces. He then begs the question, are education authorities really serious about addressing the challenges of eradicating pit toilets? Ronald Masinda, Tagadu, in the Eastern Cape.